I, I, I like to joke, right? This is my running joke that it's it's your it's your typical Jewish love story. Yeah. Jewish girl meets meets non-Jewish boy in prison, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, obviously I'm being facetious. It's not uh, your typical Jewish love story. But for, uh, I had a contraband cell phone in prison, right? Uh, I mean, we all need our cell phones, right? So for sure, me being in prison, I definitely wanted and used the cell phone. So when I met her, I was like, look, I got nine years ago. They're talking about changing the law, but mm -hmm. it's just talk. Put it in your head that I got nine years to go. And then she's she, she essentially would say like, oh, don't worry, I'm diving. We hope we get out in half that time. Uh, 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 but that's what the shame. I ended up getting out in half that time. Welcome to Talk Jewish to Me, brought to you by Aish, which is the show that discusses important issues like Jewish identity, spiritual growth, raising a Jewish family, and more. We are your hosts, Ladero and Danielle Hart, and we're excited to have you here. Whether you're a returning listener or a first-time listener, we want to thank you for joining us. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and like this video on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform. And let us know, what do you think about this episode in the comments? In this episode, we are talking with Dr. Yehuda Price. And we talk about school. We talk about his journey from prison to Jewish life, marriage, family, and the whole Nine. You guys are in for a real treat. Yehuda Price was a full participant in street warfare with rival gang members. He was a teenager who made a living robbing drug dealers. He was a gangster by choice, eventually making the decision to become a Jew by choice, a choice born within the confines of prison. Arrested as a teenager, over 16 years completed of a 24-year prison sentence was the incredible prelude to his entry into an Orthodox Jewish conversion program. Yehuda completed his Bachelor's of Arts in Sociology, his Master in Social Work, and his Doctorate in Social Work. Yehuda Price currently resides in Irvine, California with his wife and three children. So without further ado, Yehuda, Dr. Yehuda Price. Dr. Yehuda Price. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that intro, but y'all know me as Yehuda, you know, so. <laughs> oh, man, it's, it's so good to finally be able to have this long-awaited conversation, brother. Thank you so much for carving out the time to be able to chit-chat with us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I mean, this is a, a a very proud moment for myself, right? Uh, I remember when initially making contact with you and your first, you know, entry kind of into our community and how you just became a staple in our community and have brought so much love and uh, a this positive energy, this positive quality of family energy about you that I think has, has impacted so many. So I'm glad to be in your, uh, your space. Oh man. Thank you wow. so much. Thank you so much. So for those who are, for the, for those who are watching, I, I know maybe some of you guys have, have heard our story a little bit and we, we, uh, we talk about this gentleman right here. He's played a, an, an incredible role in, in our journey, just like you mentioned. Yeah, we can't even mention how many times we said shout out to Dr. Yehuda Price, <laughs> right? So yeah. many times. So thank you, because a, a lot of, you know, um, how we came about this community was him searching up you and finding yep. you and then you connecting the dots. So boom, uh, we, we're just we're just grateful Hashem connected the dots as well. I mean, you know, everything Brooke comes Hashem. from him. Yeah. Baruch Hashem. But I, I, I would say, I'll throw out there, right? I know this is <clears throat> your interview with me, but nonetheless, I I, I, I want to for sure say that, uh, I mean, there's a lot of different people who go on a journey for Judaism for different reasons, right? Uh, and it's very personal, very, you know, intimate uh, between you and the creator. Uh, but when I, when, you know, Ladero reached out to me, it wasn't just him, right? I seen his wife, I seen his family, I met y'all, I seen y'all on board, and I'm like, wow. Right. The way the cohesiveness, the way y'all function together, Claudia Israel, you know, the people of Israel. Right. The Jewish people are blessed to have you as part of us. Right. And mm -hmm. so that's why I was so supportive based on just who you were right, and who you are. Wow. wow. Thank you. That, that, mean, that means a lot. That does mean a lot. It means a lot. So we, we got a lot to talk about. Yeah. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, so many questions. I mean, your story, you know, this just in this this time that we've been knowing you it's been uh, we, we've been impacted by just your personal journey your family and we're so pumped for all of the viewers all of the listeners to get a chance to really really dive into yehuda price's life it, it's it's one it's a life that i mean it, it's just impactful so I'll, I'll let him 
explain everything, <laughs> right? And this and this, these episodes, we don't like to be the ones talking the most. So we'll we we, we like our, our guests to be the ones to kind of uh you know start sharing life. So so look, I, I want to start here. So when when people view your Instagram profile, click on your links. They're, they're so intrigued with, with what they see, right? I mean, it's just this, you go to like some of the old pictures. I, I was actually kind of scrolling <laughs> through earlier today and you see this incredible transformation. Yeah. You know, you were in prison for, for 16 years and now you're living as a as an Orthodox Jew. Like let's, I mean, even with, there's so much within that, but let's start, let's start with why were you in prison? Well, why I was in prison, um, I mean, I could sum it up as I was an active gangster, right? I was dedicated to criminality. Uh, the thing about me is it's not hard for me to become committed to something, right? It's just what is the thing I'm being committed to, right? And so uh, back then I was as a, hard, a hardcore gangster, right? That's th Those were my ethos. Those were the sort of, uh, 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 that was the culture or subculture I operated in. That it eventually led me, I was going in and out of juvenile hall, right? I don't want to act like this is just a one-time mistake, right? This was uh, a history of poor choices, right? A history mm -hmm. of uh, a young Black man in America dealing with identity, dealing with people's perception of me and my response to that. Uh, and I made a whole bunch of poor choices, eventually leading to me being incarcerated for a, for a robbery. Uh, and they gave me mm -hmm. four years for the robbery. They give me 20 years in enhancements, 10 years for uh, the crime being for the benefit of a gang and, and because a gun was displayed during the commission of the crime. Now, some of these particular enhancements or whatnot, uh, uh, the laws changed. Right. But uh, but uh, as it was, I served I was well, I was sentenced to a quarter century in prison for those particular particular things. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. that's where the my journey started. Mm. So, I mean, with you saying all of that, like, what do you think? I mean, we know you said poor decisions, right? But what was life like before, you know, prison for you? Like, how do you, what made you go down that route or yeah. make those decisions? Yeah. yeah, those are good questions. Questions that I have thought about uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, a lot. Uh, I had to actually think about this a lot, too, when I prepared for the, to go before the parole board to earn my early release, right? I served a little bit over 16 years out of that 24 year sentence because uh, a particular law changed, right? Mm. And it allowed me to present my case. So I had to really, you know, really do a lot of self-reflection. Uh, I, I think for me, I felt unseen, right? I was raised, uh, I, I wasn't raised with my biological father. Uh, he, um, I was raised by my mother uh, and uh, my white father, my white stepfather, right? And so that, uh, that caused a lot of, uh, I don't know, during the adolescence, uh, how anybody else experienced their adolescence, but you know, I, 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 there was awkwardness. There was a lot of self-consciousness about myself. I mm. was challenged of not being authentically black and mm. not being able to assimilate as as anything else, right, in society, mm. right, and so, right, right. Uh, uh, and also, there's that other function of like when I'm walking down a street, right. If I see somebody, I, I've had many experiences where people walk across the street, right. Mm. So, okay. People fear me for, you know, just for who I am right now. I can unpack that now as, a, as I'm an adult. But when I was a, a kid, this like this really affected me. Right. 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 When 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 I was told by people like, hey, you have to smile, more, smile more. Right. Not just because they thought I had a great smile, but <laughs> they felt like when I'm not smiling, I'm intimidating people. Right. And so this sort of ah. connected to. This blackness. How do I how do I respond to that? Do I embrace it? Do I want to be feared or gain some sort of power or be seen for some in, in a particular way that 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 seems possible for me at the moment, right? And and and, and that's what I did. And again, I think this is part of of who I am as a person is that I don't I don't know how to take like half step measures. I don't know okay. how to just 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 get a little bit involved with something. No, I want to be the best at it. And so I felt like I wanted to be the best gangster. And I also knew that a certain sort of structure helped me, you know, function optimally. Right. And so mm -hmm. I knew how to arrange my life to get the most the most out of this gangsterism or this most out of this gangster persona that I was trying to adopt. And so I had to make sure I was hanging with the gangsters. I had to know, mm. oh, 
who's who's dealing drugs, I want to rob him. I had to have the mm. pistols on me at all time, right? And so I wow. had to do that because that showed that showed commitment, it showed dedication. And to me, it wasn't about it wasn't about what sort of ethos, what sort of morals and values you had uh, necessarily, right? It was about authenticity and your ability to to follow through with those particular values, right? And so mm. I yeah, felt yeah. I, I was real, so and so you know, speak is a term is used, right? And 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 to me, uh, uh, that was a life worth living. That was that was a life of meaning. That was a life of purpose, even though that purpose had a uh, would lead eventually lead to some you know some pretty hard uh, outcomes. Well, that that's interesting that to hear you talk about how you're the type of person that just goes all in with something, you know, you committed, you want to make sure that you were hanging around the, 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 the drug dealers and so on and so forth. And I, and knowing you now, I see that, I, I still see that in you, you know, within the Jewish community, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're, you're all into the Jewish community. You want to be around here. You want to, you want to hang here. You want to create community. You want to, right. So it, it's, it's an interesting uh, concept to hear you to hear you talk about it's really it's really interesting. Yeah, I mean it's beautiful to see how you flipped it on the other side, yeah. right? Like how it was like it was this thug, right? And then now it's all like I'm a proud Jew, right? And I and and to see you, you know, like when Ladero and I we see you at shul, you're always like studying, you're focused. So it was like there was always dedication. You just had to focus it to the right right thing, and that's that's great. I needed God in my life. Well, I needed to allow God into my life, right? Instead of trying to run from him. <laughs> yeah. So, so you saying that, let me, let me ask you, like you growing up, like before, before prison, did you always have some type of faith walk at all? You know, was there some spiritual grounding there at home with, you know, kind of growing up at all? Yeah. I mean, so I, I was raised nominally Christian. Uh, my mom was raised uh, in Sri Lanka in a Muslim family, nine siblings, right? She eventually converted to Christianity uh, uh, in America. Okay. My dad uh, came from a backless back, uh, background, uh, immigrated from Jamaica. When I say I was raised nominally Christian, it's it's more so speaking to that, you know, Toxa, JC, weren't, we, it wasn't really mentioned in the household, but on mm -hmm. particular uh, religious holidays, we show up in church. Uh, 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 my dad used to take me to church when he used to take me to a, a Baptist church. I mean, one of the jokes... It was a joke, but it wasn't really it was a joke. Was that we try to get in the the uh, the seat furthest to the back so we could come in late and leave early, right? <laughs> so that was my sort I of got experience, you. right? Yeah, but yeah. I mean, anything you you're connected to, even culturally, even subconsciously, even just like at that particular level where you're not really uh, uh, delving deep into it and exploring it, uh, it was a part of me. So so I was still would state that yeah i'm a christian uh, uh uh before i went into prison like that's what i was yeah right yeah. And, and and i think with anything when you're trying to disassociate yourself with something uh that's a process because you're raised with these sort of memories and this nostalgia from True. connected to familiar True. things that connected you to your family and to childhood memories so didn't have a specific faith uh and even going into prison i would say i became i don't want to say anti-religious mm -hmm. but I was uh, actively questioning other people's religions uh, uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and spirituality, uh, partly because I was a confrontational jerk, I, I admit. But on the, uh, the other part of that is that uh, it's also my, more, my, my mode of inquiry. So in order for me to kind of find out the truth, I have to ask questions and questions. I need answers. Oh. And, and if it's not good enough question, right, I'm going to ask follow up. And you can't just simply say, you can't simply say, this is what it is, right? That wasn't enough. Yeah, that was, that's not, that's not good. Me, right? yeah. <laughs> so. Exactly. We say that all the time. I'm like, that's where we were. And it kind of, yeah. it, it, that sounds like that's a pattern for people who go on this journey. It was just them really asking questions and then maybe not happy with the answers that they were getting. So seeking more. Uh, so I guess with that said, you know, what was it, um, what was that moment while you were in prison that you had to make some changes in your life? Like what, what caused you to change from, okay, I don't really have a faith really right now to going to basically Judaism? Yeah. Oh, that was a good question. It, I, I mean, it was a process. So I remember, and even one of the, like the impetus for me to kind of like uh, really explore religion was, 
I was getting transferred. I was about to go to uh, Pelican Bay State Prison, which is a maximum security prison in California. Yep. Uh, uh, and this was gonna be my first like mainline prison they're sending to me, uh, sending me to. And I was like, all right, well, I might as well kind of learn about this religion <laughs> that I am claiming uh, mm -hmm. uh, to believe in, especially if it has an eternal component to it, right? I'm saying that there's some sort of everlasting life. I yep. am. I am saying I believe this. And again, me also recognizing that I am an all-in type of person yeah. and 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 also recognizing that there is hesitancy for me wanting to be an all-in type of person behind religion because that would keep me from doing things that I might have had the freedom to do otherwise, right? Okay. I like to follow myself, right? <laughs> you know, I you know, like I like, to, hey, you know what, I'm doing this because of that and no sort mm -hmm. of no sort of uh, uh, societal structure or some sort of other other sort of system or religion was going to dictate that for me. I felt like it was an imposition on my freedom. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, let me explore. Let me explore Christianity. Right. Uh, I, I I got the Catholic study Bible because there was more books in there. Right. So I wanted <laughs> uh, 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 I wanted I wanted that. And also I, there was a concept in, and not that I ever had any attention to be Catholic, but there was something that resonated with me in that. I, I remember saying, like, wait, hold up. I'm a gangster. And you're saying that some guy that who's a pastor and all that is going to be in the same place in heaven that I'm going to be. All I got to just say ah. is my bad. Right. Like, yeah. My yeah. Bad. And I'm right yeah. there. I mean, like <laughs> that don't seem like justice to me. So the concept of a, a, a sort of purgatory concept of purifying oneself. Right. Logically made sense. I'm not going to say like I, I understand all the theological implications behind that, but mm -hmm. it logically. So it, I wanted to study that as well, since I wasn't raised Catholic. So I wanted that. So I got all the books. I started. Mm. I studied the Catholic study Bible as a Jew. I like to see the good in everything, right? And so at least that's what I, I'm like. Oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah, inspiring, good. It makes uh, uh, makes me feel good, right? But the sort of uh, theological leaps that I was forced to do in order to say that this was reality and this was truth and this was Emmis. And ultimately that's what I was searching for. I was searching for not something necessarily that made me feel good. Right. Even if it made me feel uncomfortable, right. Cause change and growth comes through feeling uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I, I prefer that when it's connected to truth and Emmis. And so when I studied that, I, I didn't, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't swallow all of that. Right. Okay. So to speak. Right. Like yeah. I, it, it, it wasn't for me. And and I, I I took that to mean like when you shatter your I don't know your belief system that you grew up on right my thing wasn't oh I need to replace it my thing was oh no religion and spirituality or at least religion and religious systems right are 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 false right they're just yeah. something that we use uh, because human the frailty of being a human being in this world, right, causes us to lean on religion, uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, as a weakness, right? We're, we're weak, and so we need religion to carry on, right? Uh, uh, Karl Marx, not that I'm into quoting him, but he said at the time that which I latched onto is a uh, uh, religion is an opium for the masses, right? And mm -hmm. so I had this sort of hubris to myself, like I'm above this. There's no real system, and so. What what happened is I ended up becoming uh, I put my own sort of uh, appellation to my name to it. I said I was a agnostic deist. Now, what does that mean? Right. I just kind of mm -hmm. just melded two different sort of concepts. Yeah, together, yeah. Right? Uh, the mode of, of inquiry was sort of this scientific paradigm. And I and I said to prove the existence of God or not, it's you, you can't. It's, it, it's it, so did he exist or did he not? Doesn't really matter because I, I, I can't prove it. And so that was enough yeah. for me, very into like some sort of materialism. But I also had this sort of deist conception, meaning that there was some sort of spiritual entity. I don't know what that looked like. I don't know what it was who created the world. I just didn't necessarily believe that uh, this 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 entity uh, interacted with human beings, created the world and kind of, so th th that was my, that was my mode of being. That was my sort of, uh, what I believed in, and and that's mm -hmm. how I went about. It. I read the Quran front to back, more of an academic pursuit. Studied some Buddhism. I was reading everything, uh, just trying to get knowledge, and and, and more so, uh, 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 I wanted also to understand how people work, right? Like, this, yeah. right, how do so many people connect to this idea and all that? Yeah. Um. Uh, so that was I was content, and I felt like I could start making positive changes in my life. More so because I didn't have any th any sort of option to do anything else for my life, right? So okay. maybe I could just work on myself. What else I, can I do, right? When you're sentenced to more years than you've been alive, right? It's kind of hard mm. to fathom what your future is going to be like. I went in, I went wow. in as a teenager, 
and I'm thinking, oh, I'm not going to get out until I'm 40 something, right? The 24 year sentence. Right. So I'm sitting here like, so what can I do with my life? I can't work towards anything that's going to lead to some sort of successful career, at least as I saw it. But I did say, you know what? The only thing I have control is over who I am and who am I becoming. So I felt like I could work on myself and with the sort of sort of sort of hubris, the sort of you know pride and cockiness that I had. Uh, I'm going to definitely do this without religion. Right. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that's how I was. Right. That, yeah, that was my yeah. orientation. And that's what I was going to do. Uh, uh, and so and I like to say that. I wasn't an evangelical atheist. And so what do I mean by evangelical atheist is that you meet people who are atheists who don't believe in God, who yeah. feels like it's their duty to try to convince you, right, that you shouldn't believe in God either, right? Got like, I'd be like, yeah. look, if you don't believe in that, why, why are you pushing up on me with that, yeah, right? Yeah. If you truly don't believe in it, why do you care whether what I believe in, right? And so right. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say I was to, to that extent, right? Uh, uh, but I was definitely, definitely quick to challenge anybody who would bring their ideas towards me, right? Uh, uh, I was shooting them down. And, I, and again, I'm in a hyper-masculine environment. I'm in prison. So mm -hmm. it's all yeah. about confrontation. That's, that's a, it's a survival technique. Some people think about, oh, that's a bad way to act, to be confrontational and aggressive. Uh, but it's not necessarily a maladaptive. It's, it's adaptive in that setting, right? And so uh, it, it worked for me. It helped me survive. Uh, it was this sort of backdrop that I remember, I remember my buddy at the time, he he, he, was, he was a porter. So he cleaned the, the cell block I was on in Pelican Bay. And he told me, he's like, hey, hey, they just hired a rabbi, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> and I like, hired a rabbi. Uh, let me give you all some, let me give you all some backstory, right? What happened yeah, is yeah. There, there was somebody that was Jewish who was incarcerated who filed a lawsuit that led to the uh, uh, California prisons having to provide kosher meals. But what happened was if there was no hmm. rabbi there, uh, people who were incarcerated could petition to be transferred out of that prison. As you can imagine, everybody was trying to get out of Pelican Bay State Prison, right? Of so course. you had white supremacists signing up for the kosher meal. You had everybody signing up for the kosher meal, right? Wow. They're yeah. like, nah, 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 nah. We're going to hire a rabbi, right? So they hired a rabbi just for this, right? So nobody was showing up to services. It wasn't a spiritual need, right? It was uh, sort of a loophole. I'm trying to get out of prison need. Uh, for the most yeah. part, I don't want to mm -hmm. speak too broadly. Uh, uh, and so my buddy was trying to get out of the cell block because back then when you're in a maximum security, the only way uh, uh, the only way you can get out of you know your cell block is either you're going to the law library, you're going to go to the nurse or uh, 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 you're going to religious services. Right. And so okay. he would go, but he was the only that one there. Right. And, and so he's like, hey, I'm feeling kind of awkward. Right. Uh, uh, this is another gangbanger buddy. That's all he knew. This is, this is how I connected with them. Right. And so he's like, yeah, I feel kind of awkward in there. Can, bro, can you come through and, you know, do your thing? And what he meant by, <laughs> by that was I was known for the questioning. Right. I had. Ah. Uh, and, and, and I say this. I don't say this with pride. Trust me. I don't say this with pride because I really yeah. I really I uh, ended up when I started working at, at the at the chapel. I really, you know, understood. Uh, uh, understood the power and the need for us to create bridges between different peoples from different mm -hmm. backgrounds and Beautiful. sort of yeah. inclusivity yeah. and all that. Uh, but back then, again, this is where I was at. Like uh, they had J witness services, right? I would go there and I would question person with all these questions uh, and they would stop showing up. Right. And so <laughs> they wanted a sort of, sort of repeat uh, performance, but just with the rabbi this time. Sure, right? sure, and, sure. And, and I'm like, all right, I haven't really had a conversation with a rabbi, but, but again, it's maybe it's in my hubris, right. That, I felt like, well, uh, he's wrong, right? Uh, uh, I've studied enough religion to know just religion in general wrong. Let me go there and ask him some questions, right? I went there, oh, and this mensch of a human being, right? This 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 righteous righteous rabbi, right? He uh, uh, he answered my questions uh, in the way I needed to be answered, right? And so mm. uh, I immediately went to try to chip away at him believing in particular things, right? Uh, yeah, and and. And he said, you know what? We're not trying to, you know, Jews, we're not trying to get you to believe anything, right? Hey, just be a good person. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be a good person. You believe in, you know, the oneness of creation, the oneness of God. You're good with us, right? Yeah, you're good. Uh, and he said, and he said, if you, and, and first of all, that took me aback because I'm looking for that hard sell. I wasn't used right. to. Right, right. <laughs> we're good. You know, yeah. do you? I wasn't used to that, right? Right, right. <laughs> so, so, uh, uh, so one, that piqued my curiosity, but then he also said something uh is that he said, if you look at history and you look at the Jewish people, Judaism has worked for the Jewish people, right? And that was a simple statement, right? Yeah. 
it was a simple statement. And I remember thinking about that. Right. And, I, and I'm like, wow, I have analyzed different peoples, different religion. Uh, uh, I haven't analyzed, you know, Jewish people or I haven't explored or, or investigated that. And I've only understood Judaism and the Jewish people through the lens of other peoples, not through them uh, themselves. Right? right. I had it. And, and to me, even as a intellectual curiosity, that was a lacuna. That was a gap. Uh, 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 and, and I'm like, oh no, that's that's wrong. And and I would say during my exploration, as I studied, right. And so he would give me a book. He would give me a book, like, hey, I, I was I was interested. Now he would give me a book every day or two since I was locked in my cell all day, right. Mm-hmm. I would read. I'd read about you know Yiddish guy. He was a reform rabbi, but his first book he gave me was to be a Jew, which is from an Orthodox rabbi, right. Uh. And so uh, uh, again, he wasn't like saying like you have to believe the way I believe. It was just kind of more of a hey. This is all the flavors of of what Judaism has to offer. And, you know, uh, 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 you know, read, you know, enjoy. Yeah. Right. And I learned right through that statement that that he mentioned about how Judaism has worked for the Jewish people. I, m- I remember now I'm, now I'm looking back at the history that I that I was aware of and look like, wow, the Jewish people have been persecuted continuously for thousands of years. Yeah. Yet. Yet, not only are they living in a way that allows them to survive and thrive in whatever era, whatever generation they exist in, in whatever country for mm-hmm. thousands of years, retain their language, their customs, right? Which is just, it's just a marvel. It's just, without question, it's, 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 it's a marvel, right? Mm-hmm. They're able, they're able to, uh, to do that. And not only that, to introduce the most significant God idea into the world that has led to impacted billions of people right hmm. like you just think of all the other religions that sprung up out of this original when i say sure. god I, it's a real r- original uh revelation from god and relationship with god right that just impacted the entire world right and so i was looking at all this i'm like the jewish people that's the proof i was looking for for the existence of god for the existence wow. of god. <laughs> it's it, it's it's his people right and when 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 that that's light bulb good. clicked right when that light bulb clicked uh, 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 I just fell more in love, right? And I and and I and I realized that there was a God, there was a personal God, right? And this wasn't just again, uh, uh, just one text or one book or one paragraph or one line. This was yeah. book by book by right. book, conversation by conversation, trying to explore, trying to trying to speak and connect with Hashem in the confines of this cell. And I and 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 I'll add to that. I was separated. Remember, I'm separated from my family, my friends from who I was uh, uh, and how people related to me when I was free, right? And I, I, and I was in this kind of wilderness of exploring myself of what I believed in and what I wanted to be for the first time mm. without the sort of, with, without the sort of, what I would say sort of influences that I was so stuck on previously, mm. right? Uh, of, of what the also outside culture, what my culture, what anybody else thinks about me, right? And I'm just like, this is it. This is MS. This is Hashem. Mm. How do I? How do I be a part of this? Right, and and that's how I kind of went uh, towards this walk of faith that I'm on now. A lot of those things I, I I've never I've never known, right? right. And so it's it's good to to hear you really really just kind of open up and kind of share all this stuff, man. Like we we say in every interview that we do, like I wish we had hours with people. Because, you know, you, you guys start talking about things. I'm like, oh, my gosh, like I want so many more I, questions. I, I, so many more questions. I'm like, we, we didn't prepare for this question. We want to talk about this, too. And uh, so maybe uh, m- maybe one day we'll, we'll do a part two or something. Well, you know, luckily, with, with we're neighbors. <laughs> no, I'm down, right? You know, man. Or you can see me on Shabbos so we can have a conversation. Then we right? can talk about it, right? <laughs> but but, we, but we, we can't record it on Shabbos, though. True so. that. True <laughs> that. Uh, so we, we, we want to talk about family. We want to shift a little bit and... Uh, because you're 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 a family man now, right? Mm-hmm. So, but on top of that, you're a very accomplished individual, right? Bachelor of Arts degree in sociology, master's degree in social work, and now a doctorate's degree in social work. Like, first of all, big mazel tov. Yes, big, big, mazel big mazel tov. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very proud of you, right? But you're also very serious about your Torah studies, right? Like you're you're in a you're in a and correct me if 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 I don't say it right, but you're in a Hilchos Hilchos Shabbos program right now. Yes. Um, and that's kind of like that's on the road of of getting smicha, right? Getting or, or ordained, you know, you right? Am I? Am I yeah. Well, I, you, you get smicha in that specific uh, uh, topic for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a, a Hilcho Shabbos program uh, through Yeshivas Iyun Halacha uh, through Rav David Ostroff. He's the one teaching it. He's the Talmud of uh, of Rosh Hashanah Zalman Arbach, right? And so, yeah, I'm learning about 
learn about Shabbos. Right? Right, <laughs> so, right. Yeah. And, so, and for those who, who may not know, Shabbos, Shabbos, Shabbos is another way that we that, that we would say Shabbat, right? So yeah, I got uh, my, my minhag, my custom is Ashkenaz, right? And so I tend to pronounce things uh, 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 Shabbat. I'll say Shabbat Shalom, but I'm also good yeah. Shabbos. Yeah, yeah, no problem, <laughs> no problem. Uh, so 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 with all that. You're, you're, you're a family man. So my question is, how do you do it all, right? How do you make time for everything that you got going on? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wonder that question, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wonder that question a lot. How, uh, uh, so I, I, I mean, I, let, let me add back, let me double back a little bit and say that uh, when I say like the Jewish people's, how they live in this world and how they've been able to survive and thrive, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Part of that, Part of that, what I had glimpsed, right, wasn't simply they survived and thrived, but how, right? And I and, and it, it was the dedication to, to family and community, right? And so it starts mm -hmm. with, with 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 I seen how the family was arranged, right? And to me, that it, it became ideal, right? Like, and even when I got out uh released from prison, me, you know, you know, big part of conversion is it's not just you acquiring a, a certain amount of knowledge or learning certain things, it's how you assimilate into the Jewish community, right? Yeah, sure. uh, uh, and, and so I seen all these, all these Jewish families in my neighborhood and, 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 and how their families were set up. And I'm like, wow, I want this. And wow. so, so I will say this, right? It was a little, it, it was uh, me becoming a family man, right? Me getting into this and, and, and trying to handle all this stuff. Uh, 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 whereas a, it was a road. So I'll just add this. We, we can go into this later, but I'll add to this. Right. When yeah, I got yeah. out of jail, I wasn't with my wife at the time. Right. And so I didn't even have I was trying to rebuild or reconnect or trying to create that sort of family, uh, 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 that family vibe. But in order to do that, I also knew like I had to bring something to the table, so to speak. Right. I'm getting out of jail with nothing, nothing to my name. Right. And so. Right. Yeah. I, I knew like the only way for me to even have a family, right, was to just to go get out and go super hard and and really, really just no breaks and just continue to put my foot on the gas and go. Right. And and uh, I think that allowed me to, to accomplish what I've had in this this time. Well, Hashem allowed me to accomplish this. Right. But that was my strategy utilizing uh, Hashem as giving me that sort of opportunity. Uh, and then when I got back with my family, I wouldn't be able to do this by myself. Right. When, you know. Mm -hmm. My my wife is an integral part to this, right? Uh, uh, right now, who's with my baby, right? Who's with, who's with my son right now, right? Right, right. I can't do any work? I can't do this, right? She gets she 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 makes the home functional for me, right? Uh, functional for my family, uh, 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 and 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 I do understand too that I don't want this to be a permanent state of affairs, right? Right, where I am just this swamp down with work or school i finished school so now i'm getting more and more family time right uh uh and i would think like in what has helped me manage it more than anything is shabbos right ah. so i know right she knows my kids know that there's a moment in time right every week well there will be 25 hours right where there will be no work There'll be no school, there'll be no, you know, none of, none of that, no phones, you know, none of that, right? It's just me connecting with, with, with God, with Hashem, and with my family, and spending time, quality time, when we're having conversations and discussing yeah. challenges and and whatever's going on in their life, right? Uh, uh, and being able to connect on that level without sort of anything getting in the way. Uh, uh, Shabbos has helped make that possible, right? Judaism has made that possible. That's beautiful. beautiful. And and we say that all the time. I mean, it's it's something just so special about Shabbat. Like you get the opportunity to just unwind, to get rid of the mundane, to just really focus on family, have that personal conversation with your spouse to talk about, you know, things that have to do with meaningful stuff. Right. And, and then connecting with your kids more. So we couldn't agree more. And I think, um, you know, you elaborating a little bit more on, on marriage and family. So you've been married for how many years now? I want to I want to guess and say it's been three, but I could be wrong. It was a good good guess. So we got uh, <laughs> married in L. We got married in September of 2020, right? Okay. Got married here in uh, uh, Irvine a couple months after I, I finished my uh, my conversion program. Um, but we've been together since 2014. So, uh, well, we were. We met each other in 2014. We were together for most of that. There was that brief kind of thing that I hinted at right. a, 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 a little bit earlier, right? But I've known her since 2014. 
and we've been married since 2020. Wow. And you guys have three beautiful children together. Um, can can you talk a little bit about how did you guys meet since it's been 2014 to, okay, marriage at 2020? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I like to joke, right? This is my running joke that it's it's your, it's your typical Jewish love story. Yeah. Jewish girl meets, meets non-Jewish boy in prison, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, obviously I'm being facetious. It's not uh, your typical Jewish love story, but for, uh, I had a contraband cell phone in prison, right? Uh, I mean, we all need our cell phones, right? So for sure, me being in prison, I definitely wanted and used the cell phone. Uh, and I had my Instagram account. Uh, it was a different account than the one I had now. I got locked out of it. Whole long story. Right? Okay. But, nonetheless, <laughs> right? But, but, but nonetheless, right? I'm on my Instagram, right? Uh, uh, this was 2014. Uh, and I remember doing a hashtag search uh, for Star of David. Right? Star of David hashtag. This, yeah. you know, I was interested. Uh, uh and then I remember seeing this like this beautiful woman just appear with like a flag of Israel behind her, right? And I'm like, wow, who who is this? Right. It's kind of like when, when it's it's just like a rush of feelings and thoughts hit me. But then again, me also being very cognizant of where I'm at and like, sure. all right, sure, calm down. Uh I wasn't Yehuda at the time, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> but I was like, calm down, uh 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 whatever. I click like, no, no extra thoughts about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. She clicked like uh, back and we ended up following each other uh, on Instagram, but we didn't have any sort of interaction. So it, it was just that. Right. You know, right. When people follow you, follow them back you, you right, right. in their life. But, you know, that's what it was. Uh, then it was about six months later. I remember it was, uh, 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 we started uh, we started like liking each other's posts a little bit more. I guess that mm -hmm. was like inter Internet how you flirt on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I guess so. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, this, was, yeah. this was before DMs. So uh, uh, when I try to have a conversation with her, I, uh, uh, I had to go back to like a super old one of her posts and like this comment on her. Right. That's how, that's how we did it before the, uh, okay. the age of DMs. Right. And, <laughs> and so she funny. immediately responded. We immediately started talking. And I remember that that was uh, uh, July 6th, 2014. When we first started talking within a week, we were like officially a couple together. Now, what does that mean when she stayed in Canada at the time? She was in Vancouver, Canada, and yeah. I was in a California prison, right? With uh, right, right. And at the time, I remember uh, when I met her, I believe I had about nine years ago. This was 2014. My release date, technically, I'm supposed to be still in jail right now. My release date was in the summer of 2023. So when I met her, I was like, look, I got nine years ago. They're talking about changing the law, but mm -hmm. it's just talk. Put it in your head that I got nine years to go. And then she's she she essentially would say like, oh, don't worry, I'm diving in. We hope we get out in half that time. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 but as for the I ended up getting out in half that time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 so from her mouth to, <laughs> to, uh, to God's awesome. ears. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, that that is that's how I met. And if uh, the relationship was, it was hard, right? I, I believe she was 24 at that time, right? Uh, uh, dealing with this, you know, this 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 guy in prison. Uh, she was raised from, right? She wasn't always like, you know, people have their own journeys and paths, right? Yeah. But she, she was she was raised from, uh, uh, and she didn't get necessarily, it wasn't like her family and friends were like, yeah, you found the right guy, right? Yeah, you're doing, <laughs> you're doing, a, you're doing a quarter century in prison in California. And yeah, yeah. how logistically that works out uh, that you have a kid from a previous marriage uh, and you're somehow going to be able to connect and be together when he has nine years, but you hope that he gets out in half that time, right? It just wasn't the sort of uh, things that would have people look at it and be like, "Oh yeah, this is this is off to a great start. I mm. see a great future in this," right? <laughs> right, right. Uh, so, and, uh, and Emma was tough. I knew my, uh, I, I knew her daughter from the previous marriage. My daughter now. Uh, 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 since she was three years old, right? And mm -hmm. so I'm just communicating most of our relationship from my daughter, from my wife was through a phone. And so I had to use it when uh, the correctional officers wasn't looking, were video chatting. I would only see her once a year, right? Like she would come down and fly out there to visit uh, me once a year. So we did that. We actually did that for years, right? Like it was, it was about three years. And eventually mm. uh, we actually, uh, my first son I had, I was incarcerated when I had, my first son, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Whole another story, right? But yeah. Uh, 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 and yeah, so I mean, it, I, I would just say it, it, it was super rough. But I think what ended up happening is we forged a particular type of uh, bond and relationship, right? In that mm -hmm. it wasn't. 
facilitated by us doing activities together. All right. You know, sometimes you go out and do this and you go on doing that and you're both enjoying the experience. No, it was just us having conversations. Right. Yeah. Nothing. No shared, no shared life together or shared, shared experiences together, but us just really getting to know each other mm -hmm. uh, uh, on that. Just I'm interested in you. You're interested in me. And this is all we have. Right. <laughs> is yeah. that, this is all we have is whatever connection we could create and bond we can create through this sort of this sort of avenue. Right. And so. Now that we have sort of activities to do, right, uh, 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 that just enhances it. But I think that was what was needed uh, in order for us to kind of have the connection that allows us to outlast all the sort of stressors, right? You know, we all go through stressors, yeah, right? Yeah. Prison is a big stressor, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, every time I, I, I hear this story, you know, I got to hear it a few times, but you know, just to hear that you guys kept it together. I mean, I know there was some, it was rocky, obviously, in between times of you guys uh, growing together. But the fact that you guys are married now, three kids, sure. I mean, that's, it's it's a blessing. It, I mean, and, and I look at how you guys are really growing as a couple too. It's so beautiful to see that and to see the fight and you guys push through a lot of stuff. So I mean, thank I, you. All, yeah. all praises to God because yeah. one, I shouldn't be here right now if we were going by whatever sentence. Sure. Right. We shouldn't necessarily be together. It doesn't make sense that some random uh, uh, Jewish woman in Canada uh, connects with some guy that wants to be a Jew, mm -hmm. right? Uh, 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 in prison, right? right? Uh, 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 it, it doesn't happen. So that's I. I just I thank I, I thank God every single day for bringing my wife, bringing my family and allowing this to happen, right? It just, it's a blessing that it's still surreal. It's still, sometimes I want to pinch myself. Like, like I remember being in the jail cell. I remember being lonely. I remember having nothing. I remember being like written off. I remember like my life is over. Like mm -hmm. what, it, what is there, right? And now to be here where I'm at, I just, Ruka Shem, praise God. Praise God. That's all I can say. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I wish, um, you know, I, I wish people could yeah. like, actually see Yehuda and his family like in action living as a Jewish family here it, it's one of the most inspiring things to be able to actually see it you know on, on a daily consistent basis and uh, them involved in, in, in the community and uh, you know the, their kids in school growing they're, they're awesome parents and mm -hmm. it, it's just uh, it, it's 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 just really cool to see it really, really cool is. to see um, I, I know we, we, we don't have a lot of time and there's so many <laughs> questions. other questions that we had and we wanted to talk about it, but we might have to do another, like another part <laughs> two. Part <or> two. So. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I, I kind of want to take a quick turn and we can kind of get ready to start ending. Um, you know, I want to kind of talk about something that's kind of like hot in the, in the Jewish community right now. Uh, you know, I guess just within being a, a Jew of color, like, have you experienced any type of negativity you know with you living as a as a as a jew of color now and if so can you share maybe a quick experience and how you handled it? i think a lot of people a lot of people are, are very curious to know about a lot of these issues and how people are kind of getting through them yeah that's a it's a great question right it's a uh uh it's a, it's a great question well i'll say first i typically I don't put any qualifiers on my identity as a Jew, right? Okay. I'm a Jew, right? Yeah. I'm a Jew. Now we might talk about minhag. I'm Ashkenaz. That's my minhag, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm a Jew because uh, 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 I'm very hesitant to adopt America's color coded social constructs mm -hmm. and put that on Jewish identity when typically that's not how we view us as a people. You know, traditionally, right, for thousands yeah. of years, that hasn't been. Now it is a reality, right? I'm a black man in America. Nothing, nothing changed that, and right, so right. the same sort of you know historical experiences of being black, the perception of others, and my perception of my response to that perception, right, or how I think other people are viewing me, right, uh, uh, does impact does impact my life. Uh, uh, I haven't had any any. Ex I found since I'm a Torah observant Jew, right, like there's more of a commonality. People may be interested in like, oh, what's your story, right? Uh, okay. You know, did you convert or this, this and that, right? That, that, that might come from essentially like, you know, uh, uh, the majority of Jews in America may present as not being black like me, right? And so that's mm -hmm. obvious. Hey, what's your story? I don't look at it and I understand other people's experiences. So I don't want to, mm -hmm. 
I don't want to say is my experience speaks for anybody else besides me, right? I don't yeah, want to yeah. extrapolate to, to anybody who's melanated, right? Uh, um, is that I generally speaking, I believe people are genuinely interested in people's stories, right? The yeah. reason people watch TV. We believe that. Right, right. Yeah. They yeah. want to know, right? Not only that, imagine, imagine you haven't been so moved uh, 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 by Yiddish, by Judaism to, to change your life, right? And structure your life in a way to just follow Jewish law or what and all mm -hmm. that, right? How did this other person do it, right? That's just interesting. It doesn't mean you're going to do it. It doesn't mean like you're thinking some, anything else more than that because they are black or they are melanated or they have color, right? right. I think that's more so more so the uh, uh, what people are after, that sort of thing, okay. right? Uh, uh, and, and I've, so I haven't had any direct experiences of somebody uh, uh, of treating me in a way that made me feel less than okay. uh, uh, because I am because I am, you know, black and because I'm Jewish. Right. I I haven't had that. I've heard of other experiences uh, uh, mm -hmm. and I definitely believe a lot. Of, uh, I definitely believe other experiences to be real because I understand Jews are human beings as well. Sure, right. Sure. And just be, just because. Just because you say I am adopting a particular mode of being in this world, I'm trying to follow these particular laws. I'm trying. Doesn't mean that you don't get angry. Doesn't mean that you have no sort of prejudice or bias. Doesn't mean that your brain is automatically registers things a certain way. And when you don't see that, or it doesn't meet your expectations, that you may noticeably respond in a way, uh, 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 right, uh, that affects other people, right. And so, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think more so than anything, right. It's it's. It's 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 putting ourselves out here. I think you're doing it beautifully. So super shout outs to y'all as a family, right? Uh, uh, and to Ace for even giving you the platform, right? Because I often mm -hmm. I often talk about people talking about inclusivity or diversity because it sounds good, right? These are great expressions and these sure, are sure. these are the terms we use. But if we are only looked at as the others, or you bring us on, hey, let's talk to the black person or the black Jew or this and that, right? No. Put, put, put people in leadership, right? Put people with their own sort of platforms, right? And I and I su super respect Aish, right, uh, doing this, and I respect what y'all doing this, right, because you're showing that it's not a sideshow, right? We are we are Jews who who live lives, who have our own sort of experiences, right? Mm -hmm. Our diversity can enhance a Yiddish kite, right? It can enhance by that sort of yeah. that sort of experience we're bringing a way to look at it. Our different ways to go about bringing upon unity right and mm -hmm. inclusivity right like absolutely we, we, we can add that to it right, uh, right. Uh, uh, uh so uh, again i'll just say that like i haven't had that sort of direct experience if anything i've experienced a lot more uh, uh i've experienced not just regular racism like from uh, you know other people right but now this 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 anti-semitism on top of that right so mm -hmm. i've experienced a lot of anti-semitism uh, then I've had experienced racism, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so that's my reality. And so, you know, I know my number one response to that is, you know what? I'm just going to cling more to Hashem, to God, and I'm just going to try to be more Jewish, right? That's <laughs> right. right. Yes, <laughs> yes. Myself, right? It's not about working on other people. It's about working on myself. And then, right, maybe I'll have that much more of an impact. But I want to do it through empathy as opposed to condemnation, as opposed yeah. to as, as opposed to making other people feel bad in order to kind of rectify some of the struggles, the real struggles with racism that I've faced as being black in America. Right, right. Beautifully said. I, I'm I'm Beautifully so said. I'm so glad you said everything that you said and how you said it. And then you didn't just say it, but you also I feel like you also gave a, a, a remedy as well. Like how you said, when you experience anti-Semitism, what are you going to do? I'm going to be more Jewish. I'm going I'm going to turn up more. Right. I'm, going, I'm about to get me a blinged out keeper. Or so, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. I'm about, but I want I want to really, really let people know I'm I'm proud. You know what I mean? So I, I, I think that is such a a beautiful remedy because I, I we have that as a question like, OK, well, what is the remedy? For some yeah. of these things you know and and it's not to cover up or 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 to hide or to and and that and that may be some people's go-to but but i think what you're saying is really really going to elevate the jewish people 100 yeah thank you thank you so i guess exiting out i i, I don't i don't want to exit out because there's i mean even with your explanation i was like oh, i have i have more questions we can, <laughs> you know but but we we have this thing that we 
that, that, that we just started doing is called the fast five, right? And so we have like five I'm questions. Nervous. I'm already <laughs> nervous. <laughs> so we got five, you know, five quick questions that we'll just kind of throw out there and then off the top of the dome, you just know, short response or however you feel about it. And, uh, and we, and we'll take it out from here. So right. fast five, my life's motto is. I keep a chamois before me always. Uh, yeah. I try. Yeah, I try. Yeah. I'm a cat, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I've learned that. I remember you, I think, I think I, I asked you one time we were studying together and I think you told me, you showed me that, that, uh, that, that verse on your talus. Mm. Right. Yeah. And, and I asked you about it and it was from then, like you showed me in the mission Barua where it was kind of talking about that. And, and I, and I've come to allow that to actually be one of my go-tos daily as well. Right. And I, I, I remembered it in, in Hebrew, Shaviti, Hashem, Lenegdi, Tamid. Right. And so like, that's really something I, I do a lot in my prayer time. So I love that. Awesome. And uh, number two. So what is your favorite part of being a husband? Having somebody that cares about me and cares about my well-being, cares about cares about what I'm going through, right? And 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 knows me. A lot of a lot of people have known me, right? Uh, she knows me. So just me being a husband uh, to my particular wife, right? Uh, 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 <laughs> is is it just it's a it's a, it's a blessing, right? And so just just to have her know me and be there for me is the best part of uh, being a husband. Beautiful. Beautiful. Favorite part of being a father. It's you know when I when I watch my children, right? Uh, I I I I look at them and I see all the things uh, that went wrong for me, right? And me seeing like all the sort of the innocence, right? The uh, how they're just so inquisitive and they 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 want so much and they don't know that this might be hard or this, this, this might be a barrier or, and, 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 and just me being able to, to share in their innocence and their, to share in uh, 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 what they're experiencing at this particular age and me being able to help build them up into being the, the Jews that could impact the world. That's my favorite part of being a father. Beautiful. All right. Number four, most memorable moment. Getting out of prison. <laughs> right, that's I have a couple memorable. I, hey. I want to throw my marriage in there. I want to throw some, some births of children in there. Right, right, right. right. But, but the life changing experience more than so than anything was freedom. Right. So getting out of prison yeah. and hugging my mom and my uh, my sister. Yeah. Wow, beautiful. Last one. What is your favorite Shabbat meal? Oh, my favorite Shabbos meal. Woo. Well, well, one because my just in case my wife's listening, all the meals are my favorite. But uh, 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 to be specific, right? Uh, I like her. I like her Moroccan fish. I like her. Oh, I like her Moroccan fish too. <laughs> it's, so much, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. We love it. I, I'm waiting to come through y'all place for a shopping meal. So <laughs> I know. I know. I hear. You know, Daryl tell me all the time. Right? Oh, <laughs> See, I told you. I'll be talking about your food, man. Uh, Ye Yehuda, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for for elevating us all I, I i can speak for my wife and i this was definitely an elevated conversation for us we've learned a lot there's a lot of things we learned about you that we didn't even know yeah. yet you know and mm -hmm. uh which i think is very cool but we really really hope that the, our, our our viewers our listeners have uh, have re really been able to pull something from this conversation right here um you know you i think I, we both really believe that you and your family are a gift to the jewish community you guys are doing some beautiful things. You know, you guys are uh, being lights for not just the Jewish community, but you guys are lights to the world as well. So thank you so much. We wish you nothing but happiness and peace and blessings to to everything that, that you and your family do. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure on this show. It's been a pleasure to know you. And it's been a pleasure to brag about what y'all are doing. <laughs> so many of my friends and everywhere I go, I was just in Baltimore the other day talking about y'all, right? And uh, oh, man. Uh, uh, you, you, you make the Jewish people, you put us in the best possible light. We love you. We love you. We love you. The community needs you. We need you. Thank you so much for your impact on us and what you're doing to broader society and to broader Yiddishkeit to Claudia Israel.
Wow. Wow. That's thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so is there any, how can people find you? How can people find Dr. Yehuda Price? Oh, uh, uh, well, I am Yehuda Price uh, uh, on Instagram. <laughs> I, I also have a, a consulting company, uh, RaishLakishConsulting.com. Uh, you can reach me out there. Any sort of inquiries, Yehuda Price at gmail.com. Awesome. Beautiful. Make sure you guys go support, 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 support. We'll make sure that we put all of his social links down in the description. And thank you guys so much for listening. Yeah. We'll see you on the next one. Episode six with Yehuda Price. I'm I'm so happy that we were able to to get him on because that was that was another very incredible elevating conversation. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like we, we we know him more. Yeah. I feel like uh, I don't know. I I I'm really hoping that everybody that listened was able to really just get impacted inspired for mm -hmm. sure i mean i was again and we've heard this story multiple times but just to hear it from him again personally it's it's like wow you know just to hear how he's he was once you know per, once this person to now who he is today and um and to know that we have a great relationship that we're literally neighbors uh with him but just to be able to have that time to now i feel like our relationship is going to grow so much more and we have even more to talk about yeah. with him uh, but absolutely an amazing, amazing interview. This was episode number six. And uh, wow, like we said, I, we hope that there was something that you took from this. For yeah. sure. So again, make sure you guys support Yehuda Price. We'll put again, all his social platforms and everything, his contact information down in the description and just support everything that he has going on Absolutely. he's a he's a phenomenal phenomenal human being so if you enjoy this h content please make sure you take the time to subscribe and to like it there's so many incredible incredible videos and content on the h channel and also make sure you guys rate the h podcast on apple as well and if you want to find us you'll be able to find us at house of love across the board that's youtube and instagram Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you on the next one.